Namaste dear learners and once again welcome back to the interactive classroom of National Institute of Open Schooling. We are a part of senior secondary course here, the biology subject and chapter 26. Dear learners, it's a chapter which has a title that not many of us would like to read. But it's a fact of human life today. It's very much a part of our living and unless we try to understand this topic scientifically, you and I may not be able to give our contribution to abating what's happening around us, which is also the title of the chapter, Pollution. What does pollution really mean? When do you say that a resource or a particular aspect or component is polluted? As the name itself says, and as I said, it's not something that you and I would like to look at. That is also what goes into the definition of pollution. Something which is adverse, something which is undesirable, which does not deserve to be in its place. Whenever this kind of addition or deletion happens in the prevailing natural system, it leads to pollution. So introduction of a contaminant, contaminant is a highly technical term, but it's a substance which contaminates or you know, changes, brings about a negative change in a particular resource. That's called a pollutant. And what it does to that natural environment or natural resource, it's called pollution. So what around us can really get polluted? Well, the chapter before this talks about natural resources. You remember the soil, the water, the biodiversity. These are the resources which nature has provided to us and other living beings to be able to live in a healthy, comfortable manner. If these resources experience an adverse change due to something being added to them, a polluted pollutant being added to them, then it is their pollution. So when we study pollution, we can actually study it in four different classified manner. We can look at air as a natural resource and how it gets polluted. Water, we talked about it. Water pollution. In the previous chapter, we did talk about soil, the topmost layer on the earth. So that is when that gets polluted, we call it that our land is polluted. So we call it land pollution. But there is also something present in the air and if that the level of that goes up, which is the sound, the various noises, there are lots of natural noises as well. But a large number of noises created today on this earth are due to human activities. When that goes beyond a particular limit, it can also lead to a lot of problems. We will see in detail what kind of problems it can lead to. But that's called noise pollution. So in, in the next few minutes, we will look at these pollution one by one. Let's begin with the air. Can we really pollute air is a question. Scientifically, this is a question because air is a mixture. And uh, you know, there's a big difference between a mixture and a compound. A compound has fixed composition, like water will always be H2O. It will always have two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. Whether you find that water in India or you find it, say, in any other part of Asia or you find it in America, the water would everywhere be, it will be water only when it is H2O. But by nature itself, air is not a compound. It's a mixture. It's a mixture of large number of gases. Mixture doesn't have fixed composition. Now, if air doesn't have a fixed composition, can we actually pollute it? Yes, learners, we can still pollute it. It is so because while air doesn't have a fixed composition that only so much percentage of nitrogen oxide or so much percentage of oxygen but there is an average air quality, an average mixture of gases around us that is good 
for us to live and other life forms also to survive. The trees, the other creatures, the bacteria living in the soil, they all need certain average mixture of gases to be able to survive well. And that's how we define air. Therefore, the various gases naturally in air at different points in time in different places can be found within a range of percentage. The minute this range is disturbed, air becomes polluted and it is actually happening today. Typically speaking, the gases that air has, highest amount of gas that it has is nitrogen and then there is oxygen, there is methane, a large number of uh, percentage of gas in air is also methane. Some amount of the volume in air is occupied by water vapors due to evaporation. So the water is also found in air and then there are number of gases which are there in very small amount. When the amount is very small and we change it by a smaller amount again, that change proportionately is large. And it can therefore change the quality of the air the way we need it. And such an air is called polluted air. It, although it's a fact that from time to time, place to place, the various components in air do change. So the humidity, which is largely the water vapor contained in the air, is of certain type right now. But during monsoons, the same humidity gets built up. But that doesn't make air polluted because that's a part of the natural process. However, if we add components to air due to human activities which are not naturally present in the air or which we add in such large amount that nature itself cannot purify it within a certain period of time, then air becomes polluted. Such alterations lead to air pollution. How does this, these pollutants reach the air? Like most of the things that we have in science, this also has two clear categories, especially in environmental science. There are some factors which are natural factors and therefore to a great extent nature can take care of it. But there are larger number of factors which are human made factors. Let's look at them quickly. Sometimes if a volcano is erupting, the air around the volcano, the atmosphere there may not be very healthy. After volcanoes, there are other processes as well which can disturb the quality of air temporarily, natural processes like storms. They bring in a lot of particles, the dust particles into the air which we call as particulate matter. Now that air also has poor quality if we breathe it. We can, we can face problems and difficulties. But again, nature can purify it over a period of time. When in nature there are forest fires, you know, forest fires is very much natural process. It's man-made as well. So suddenly one realizes that for a month or so, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air or sometimes even carbon monoxide in the air around that forest is very high. But over weeks and months, this air also gets purified due to air circulation at global level, the global wind currents. At a very smaller scale, sometimes the plants and some of the natural processes around plants can also pollute the air. So, you know, uh, you would have heard doctors say typically during after holy time, you know, April, March, April, they would say, oh, you have allergy to dust, you have allergy to pollens. It's a pollen energy. If you have cough and cold and you, you sustain it for a long number of uh, days, then they say, now that's the time when a lot of pollination in India at least is happening in a lot of Indian species. When the flowers bloom, and that's typically basant as we call it, during that time, the flowers are blooming and they have what is called the reproductive parts in them, which are small, very small. You would have, you would be able to see in a china rose, if you open and uh, you see a 
flower at close depth, you'll be able to see some dust, powdery kind of thing on it. Now that's pollen. That's actually the male gamete. With wind and air, sometimes it gets flown to another plant of the same species and then it will fertilize that plant and new plant will get created. This pollination through wind and air at times can change or alter the quality of the air in that particular area and sometimes you and I can feel allergic to us. But that is also a natural process and within as soon as the basant or that pollination period is over, the air comes back to its average normal quality. So number of natural reasons by which air pollution can happen but the pollution is also taken care of it by nature. Now let us come to some of the human made factors. A lot of exhaust that goes in out of human activities into the air. All of these are polluting the air because they contain gases which are either not there naturally in the air or even when it is there naturally their proportion in the smoke that goes out of human activities is extremely high and therefore it pollutes the air. So a lot of exhaust out of human activities can pollute the air on the earth because the smoke that goes out of these activities either adds those gases to the air which naturally air does not have or even when air has those gases the amount and the quantity in which human activity smoke or exhaust adds is out of natural range and it pollutes the air. I have listed on the slide some examples for you on what these human activities are. Our industries, there is exhaust that goes out of the industries. A lot of engine, so it could be in the aircrafts, it could be in the two wheelers or the cars that you and I drive, it could be the train, the steam engine. They all add gases of different types and different quantities to the air. Learners, a lot of exhaust whether visible or not visible also goes out of our homes into the air either through the process of cooking or sometimes in the process of heating the houses during winters or little bit of burning here and there that you and I may be doing say campfires and those kinds of things. So a lot of exhaust goes out of this activity as well. A very large amount of heated gases get added to our air due to the electricity generation activities that we have. But it is a fact that we need that electricity. However, remember every time a power plant is working, it is adding pollutants to our air. So we talked about natural and we talked about human made sources. In this slide, I won't go too much into detail, but I will touch upon because this slide is from the textbook. It is completely there in the textbook. I have two slides, this one and the next one, which is from the textbook typically trying to tell you that what happens when certain gases are extra or higher in quantity in the air. It could be gases of sulphur, so ox as sulphur is emitted from industries, it can form varieties of sulphur oxides. As nitrogen goes out of say the fertilizer plant or uh, you know the pesticides that we may be creating, nitrogen oxides can get added to the air because oxygen is always present there. A lot of industries emit hydrocarbons into the air. Now all of these come from a variety of industries and the sources is listed in your uh, textbook and also in the slide. But they have different different kinds of effect on us, on humans. Some will affect our respiratory system. Typically say sulfur dioxide, oxides of nitrogen, they do affect or high amount of carbon monoxide, it can poison and choke our respiratory system. But there are some other ones which can even lead to as harmful effect as leading to cancer. They change a lot of processes in our body and can create cancer in our uh, cancerous cells in our body like the hydrocarbons. So the list goes on. Two very important and very popularly known pollutants that you read in the newspapers or a lot of news channels in the television also talk about it and um, you know cities like Delhi experience it in a very severe manner is what is called high amount of particulate matter 
too much dust there is always dust in the air but when too much dust happens it disturbs everything it disturbs us it also disturbs the other living organisms including plants because that dust gets coated on the leaves and the plants can't breathe anymore sometimes it affects the photosynthesis as well it affects our respiratory system as well of this smog is a by product technically speak speaking smog is smoke which is coming out of say burning of uh, the grasses or burning of agricultural remains say in the farms of haryana and uttar pradesh that is the smoke which is coming out but at the same time during winters what happens this is smoke which has high amount of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in winters the air is much cooler than the air on the lower level so the smoke doesn't go up anymore it hangs there because as it goes up it cools and becomes dense so it can't fly up anymore it hangs there and in in metropolitan cities especially cities like delhi chennai one can see that there is one clear layer of smoke all the time hanging in the city that is smog which is a combination of smoke and fog that appears during winters now this is extremely dangerous for our lungs for our respiratory system for a lot of other processes in our body and also for plants and animals so it's not just that air quality becomes poor but when air quality becomes poor it becomes so distressful for us that sometimes even the judicial system like in the case of delhi that courts have to give order and say please stop burning the crop remains or stop construction because a lot of cement particles are going in the air so that happens acid rain is yet one more serious problem of air pollution we just realize that there is constantly exhaust going into the air of sulfur nitrogen carbon carbon dioxide carbon monoxide now imagine that these gases these pollutants are somewhere there in the air around us and it's the monsoon time or it's 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 the rainfall time in that area and suddenly the rains come in there is high humidity in the air because it's rainfall time and there is a large amount of water in the air this water mixes with the oxides of the gases and create acid so you can get nitric acid and sulfuric acid this acid actually comes down in the rainfall imagine having rainfall and not being able to enjoy in fact it is so disastrous that around the factory areas where the smoke would have gone out it can not just harm human beings but it also kills the vegetation there because there is acid in the rainfall now that is a kind of pollution we would really not want to happen right so acid rains is a problem another important aspect that the whole world community at global level is dealing with when it comes to air pollution it's called global warming this will take a little time for you to understand because it's it's talked about a lot in the media in the news channels but there is a science behind it and there's a scientific concept called the greenhouse effect if there was no greenhouse this greenhouse effect as you would read they say is responsible for global warming but there is something in between which disconnects greenhouse with global warming in the way that greenhouse is a natural process and learners remember if there was no greenhouse you and i would not be able to survive on the earth so let's try to first understand what is this natural process of greenhouse typically during the day we get sun rays on the earth right and therefore the earth's surface get heated it absorbs a lot of heat and this energy as you studied in chapter 23 ecological principles it is used for a variety of work including creation and you know synthesis of food and food eating and movement and all that happens now during the night that part of the earth doesn't receive sun rays so the atmosphere cools down compared to the daytime so there's a temperature difference between the air and the surface of the earth and we know that by virtue of energy wherever there is higher energy it will move towards the area of lower energy air has less temperature and less energy and less heat the surface of earth in the evening hours and night hours is warmer so slowly the energy that was absorbed during the day 
in a different form, in an infrared form, it moves to the atmosphere. And from the atmosphere, eventually it goes to the universe. It crosses the air also and it grows to the universe. In this process, there are certain gases in our atmosphere which keep certain amount of energy within them. They don't let it go to the universe. These gases are largely carbon dioxide. The most potent greenhouse gas is water vapor. The water vapor in the air, we say usually, you know, you would hear your parents, grandparents or your uh, family members say, oh, if it's cloudy, it will be less chilly. It won't be very cold because clouds retain a lot of heat during the night time and keep the earth warm. Similarly, carbon dioxide also is a greenhouse gas. It does that. Methane also does that. So there are percentage and proportion of these gases present naturally in the air, which doesn't allow all the energy to go out of the atmosphere during night hours. And therefore, even during the night time, the earth remains a little warm. If there was no water vapor, if there was no carbon dioxide, no methane, all the energy would have left the earth during night times and it would have become really, really cold. And the temperature difference between the day and the night would be just huge. We don't know what may have happened, but one can guess that perhaps a lot of life forms would not have existed on the earth because it would have become so cold at night that our systems would collapse, our body systems would collapse. So greenhouse effect is natural. It is due to gases present in naturally in the air in certain amount and you can see it on the slide now. You are seeing that. And it keeps the earth temperature, average temperature in a range which is good for all life forms on the earth. So greenhouse effect is desirable. If it wasn't there, we would not be here hope, perhaps on this earth. But now what is happening due, due to human activities, you know, due to human activities, a large amount of carbon dioxide, we are burning fuel everywhere, whether we burn the petroleum or we burn the petrol, diesel, kerosene or uh, even the wood. Every time we are burning any fuel, we are creating carbon dioxide. Where does it go? It goes to the atmosphere. So the proportion of carbon dioxide in our air goes up. And remember, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. By nature, it will protect the earth and keep the energy within the earth system. So now more and more heat is remaining within the earth because the amount of carbon dioxide has gone up and that's causing rise in average temperature of our earth. And that can do a lot of harm to complete life and that's why scientists, politicians and common citizens on this earth everywhere globally are worried about global warming. You know, it's, it's comparable to the fever we get. 98.3, 98.6, we count it as normal. Degree Fahrenheit is normal body temperature. But the minute it becomes 99, it becomes 100, the doctor has to give us medicine. There is something very much wrong in our system. Same as the earth. You know, even one degree rise is too much for the earth to handle. And the predictions are that we are going to raise the temperature, even if we stop all the activities, at least by 1.5 degree Celsius. So imagine what will happen on the earth. So that is air pollution. It's a part of air pollution as well, global warming. Last that we see in the air is what is popularly called the ozone hole. What is this kind of pollution? A lot of sprays that you and I use, like the deodorants or the refrigeration, refrigerator that you and I have at home and there are large refrigeration industries, they all use something called the chlorofluorocarbons. That's a, that's a compound. A, a, in fact, a family of compounds. There are many compounds in it. It's a family of compound. Now, in the air, ozone is present naturally. There are, this, what this ozone done, it's, there is very little amount of ozone present immediately our, over our head in the lower layers. But as we cross the troposphere, which is the lowermost layer, and we move towards the stratosphere, there is a large amount of ozone present there. Now, there is a reason why this ozone is there and it is beneficial for us. This ozone, as the sunlight comes, sunlight is, it has lights in a variety of range. Like ultraviolet is also a part of sunlight. 
But this ozone layer near the stratosphere, it acts like an umbrella to UV rays. It doesn't allow you, UV rays to come into that come to the Earth's surface. It kicks it back from there, and therefore all the life down on the Earth is protected from ultraviolet rays. But the the sprays that we are using, the refrigeration industry. There is a byproduct of chlorofluorocarbons that it, which is which is in gaseous form. They go back to the air, and they go towards the stratosphere. In the stratosphere, they break the ozone molecule. Ozone has three oxygen atoms, O3. They break them, and there is no more ozone, but there is oxygen, and there is o another oxygen left out of it. Oxygen molecule and oxygen atom. So ozone is gone. The minute ozone is gone. the uv rays starts coming to the earth which is harmful not just for human beings but a lot of other life forms on earth and learners it's already on the poles because you remember there is more gravity on the earth the the air circulation ultimately as we move up the layer it concentrates on the two poles of the earth already they are saying over antarctica there is a huge depletion of ozone ozone layer has become very thin in many places there is no ozone and that's being called as the ozone hole if that happens nobody will be able to protect us from uv rays but a lot of effort has already happened and the good news is that slowly the ozone in the stratosphere has begun to build up we realized it almost 3 decades ago about 30 years ago and a great amount of work and effort has already happened to curve the ozone hole process so that was very quickly about what air around us is what does air pollution mean and well the theory says that if we can't keep the air around us neat and clean we will have a lot of problem there are there are three ways in which we can curb air pollution one is to reduce combustion to burn as little as possible the other one is absorption as the name says so on the exhaust of industries there are those chemicals and as we call them scrubbers the way we clean our utensils those kinds of like the foam like structure are put up there these foam has a lot of space in them and this they absorb foam can absorb a lot of poisonous and non required gases they get absorbed into the foam and therefore the smoke that goes finally to the air has less amount of non desirable gases and the last way to curb air pollution is the way absorption happens inside a substance similarly scientifically there is a term called adsorption which happens on the surface there are certain uh, chemicals and there are certain products which have a lot of things attached to their surface now if we can have those things put up on the chimneys of the industries and factories that they absorb the chemical poisonous gases on their surface they get stuck there then these gases remain adsorbed on the surface and the smoke that leaves the factories is much clearer of these poisonous gases and can reduce air pollution so today that's where we would stop and in our next lesson when we meet together again we will continue with part 2 of pollution and look at some of the other natural resources and how they are getting polluted so thank you learners